Hey guys, how's it going? Quick film study on Guillermo Rugendial and Vasily Lomachenko. Um, so what I'm going to do with this particular video is I'm going to talk about counterpunching, speed, positioning, a, a number of different things that both fighters do to neutralize their opponents. So I really do hope you enjoy this video. And um, with that said, on to the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is how Guillermo Rugendial is able to prevent Nonito Donaire from being able to establish his lead for dominance off of the jab. Nonito Donaire is actually never able to establish his jab while moving to his left because Guillermo Rugendial would counter with a straight left hand on the turn or on the pivot. So Donaire is therefore unable to establish lead foot dominance on Rugendial. So we're going to take a look at a few examples. Rugendial still having success going in that direction. Hands. He's, he's shot. Yeah, he throws some really hard shots, Jim, with bad intent on So as you can see, Donaire is coming in. As you can see, Donna is doubling up on his jab while circling out to his left. He is trying to establish lead foot dominance by stepping to the outside of Guillermo Rigondeaux's right shoulder. However, Rigondeaux will simply pivot to his left and shoot the straight left hand to counter this move. As you can see, Rigondeaux is able to counter Nonito Donaire's tactic with a straight left hand. Now this will work just the same for a conventional fighter, the only difference of course being that the south ball will be moving out to your left to get on the outside of your left shoulder and you can throw the straight right hand as you step over to the right. So now we're going to take a look at how Lomachenko is able to counter off the jab and then perform a Jack Dempsey double shift. So the first thing is Lomachenko is going to slip the jab to the outside and counter with a straight left hand and then Lomachenko is then going to proceed to perform the Jack Dempsey double shift forcing Gary Russell back onto the ropes. Of course, this preserves his forward momentum with the punch. Landing combinations very effectively. The straight left throws to the right. He is pushing Gary Russell back. As you can see, he's going to slip this jab to the outside. Lomachenko slips Gary Russell's jab to the outside. It is always safer and more advisable to slip the jab to the outside because it moves your head away from any of your opponent's weapons. Slipping to the inside can be very dangerous, but as with everything in boxing, it does have its uses. Now you see the straight left hand counter. Lomachenko counters with a straight left hand. This is a typical slip and counter over the jab. Very common. And there you see him step forward. Off of the straight left hand, notice that Lomachenko has stepped his left foot forward. This of course is phase one of the double shift. He is effectively changing stance after the punch from southward to conventional. Shifting allows you to carry your body weight into the punch. Then you see you shoot the right hand and then he's going to shift back into the southpaw stance. Off of the right hand, Lomachenko now steps his right foot forward, bringing him back into the southpaw stance. He has now completed the Jack Dempsey double shift. As previously mentioned, shifting allows a fighter to conserve his forward momentum with the punch. This increases your punching power and the distance covered with the punch. Some notable fighters who still do this today is Gennady Golovkin and Roman Gonzalez as well. Okay, so now if you remember in my Lomachenko film study, I talked about how Opir Pino should be moving into the blue space which had been vacated by Vasily Lomachenko when Lomachenko was spinning off of him. And likewise, in my film study of Roman Gonzalez, I talked about how Akira Yagashi should also be moving into the space which has just been vacated by Gonzalez. So now we're going to take a look at Guillermo Rigondeau when he's in the same position. The first thing I want you to do is to pay very close attention to Nonito Donaire's current position. So there we see that Nonito Donaire shoots a jab and steps over to his left. Now Donaire is stepping around Rigondeau. Notice how he is now on the outside of Guillermo Rigondeau's right shoulder. This is Nonito Donaire attempting to make an angle on Rigondeau so that he can land that right hand or he can walk Rigo into a right hand. So now I've done this intentionally to show you the change in position. I want to make this as clear as I absolutely possibly can. So you can see the, the clear change in Nonito Donaire's position as I blur these two images into one. Now the question is, what is Guillermo Rigondeau going to do? Is he going to turn on the spot and face Nonito Donaire and get cracked in the jaw and chin checked? Or is he going to try something else? Let's see. Guillermo Rigondeau steps into the vacated space by Nonito Donaire. You can always count on the sweet scientist to do the right thing. Once again, you always step into the space vacated by your opponent.
when they try to spin off you. Now compare these two images. You can see that Guillermo Regondiao changes places with Nonitoto on there, or he takes and swaps places basically. This is 100% the correct thing to do when an opponent attempts to spin off you. You always occupy the, the vacated space. Okay, now we're going to talk about how Guillermo Regondiao is able to counter after using his lead hand as an early warning system. So what you're about to see now is Nonito Dona is going to challenge Guillermo Regondiao's lead hand. And as you probably know by now, when Rigo's lead hand is challenged, he instantly changes levels and slips the punch, regardless of whether he sees it coming or not. In fact, he doesn't have to see the punch coming. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. He just changes levels and defends regardless. So that's going to happen, and then he's going to counter Donet's left hook with a right hook of his own. So let's take a look. And that's one of the reasons, Jim, he was only a two. So as you can see, he's going to get his lead hand challenged. Notice Rigondeau automatically changes levels when his lead hand is challenged by Donet. Rigondeau doesn't need to see the punch in order to slip or avoid the punch. See, the thing is, he instantly changes levels once his lead hand is challenged. This is why it's an early warning system. After Rigondeau makes Nonito Dona miss the left hook, he counters over the top with a right hook of his own. This is simply brilliant boxing from Rigondeau. The way he changes levels to cause Nonito Dona to miss and then counter over the top of that left hook shows that this fight was a complete mismatch from the beginning. The skill gap was just way too wide. Now we're going to talk about Rigondeau's left uppercut counter and also the speed of his countering as well. Rigondeau makes use of the left uppercut to counter a variety of punches, including the jab to the body and the left hook to the head. The speed of his counters are absolutely amazing. So we're going to take a look at, at a few examples now. He's landed so far. Here at Lee and seems to land them where he wants. Rigondeau shoots the left uppercut down to the body as Nonito Donia attempts a left jab to the body. Rigondeau's ability to see the punch judge the distance and the speed of the punch and then select the most suitable counter for the punch is easily one of the best in boxing. Sometimes Guillermo Rigonia's counters are so lightning quick that it actually looks like he's leading and dictating the action of the fight. In reality, what you are actually seeing right now is Rigonia's counter to Nonito Donia's left hook. This is simply incredible speed. Once again, Guillermo Rigondeau is so quick with his counter left uppercut slash shovel hook that it actually looks like he's leading. However, Rigondeau actually notices Donaire's setting up to throw a left hook and counters with a left uppercut of his own. Rigondeau's counters and the speed of his counters are actually amazing to see. That's one of the reasons, Jim. He was only a two as he's landed so far. Thinks he may have a chance for a knockout. Okay, so having taken a look at Guillermo Rigondeau's counter punching abilities as well as the speed of Rigondeau's counter punching, we're going to do the exact same thing with Vasily Lomachenko. We're going to take a look at his counter punching abilities and the speed at which he is able to counter his opponents. So we're going to take a look at a few examples from Vasily Lomachenko. Unbelievable. I mean, so Lomachenko slips to the outside of this jab and counters with a straight left hand. Now, the speed of this counter is absolutely outstanding. Lomachenko doesn't slip and then counter the jab, he's countering while simultaneously slipping to the outside. This is outstanding skill by Vasily Lomachenko. This time, Lomachenko counters over the jab with an overhand right. This is a very typical counter for the jab, especially when the jab is low or around chest high. Lomachenko once again shows his counter punching abilities with this overhand right. Beautiful to watch. Now we're going to take a look at Lomachenko once again making use of block removal techniques to set up his offense. Lomachenko continues to impress me with his ability to think outside the box. As we can see, as we can see in the Gary Russell fight and now we see in his latest fight, Lomachenko likes to use block removal techniques to actually set up his offense, especially when his opponents cover up. So we're going to take a look at what happened. Flexes are super quick. Just hurt Charlatan again. So as you can see, he has uh, Opera Opinion on the ropes. Here you can see Lomachenko use the right glove to take away Opera Opinion's right hand.
to create a clear opening for the left hook. This is a very, very smart thing to do and something which is rarely seen in boxing today. It shows you the skill level of Vasily Lomachenko. And there's the left hook. And he's going to crack him over the head with an overhand right. And then he's going to remove his hand. As you can see, Lomachenko uses the, his right glove to remove Opirapinia's right hand away from his head, allowing him to shoot the left hook once again. Lomachenko is one of the very few fighters today who actually utilizes this type of technique. This is very, very smart and creative from Vasily Lomachenko. And then you see the left hook. Okay guys, so thanks for watching. I'm going to end the video here. This was just a quick video looking at both Guillermo Rugendia and Vasily Lomachenko. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. The links in the description as always. Please leave your comments and your feedback. With that said, on to the next one. Well, he's got a mark on the left cheek. And given what we've seen of Alperio Pindo's right hand, I'm guessing that's the result of head contact between Lomachenko and Alperio Pindo because, you know, that happens quite frequently when you've got a southpaw against a conventional fighter. Particularly a conventional fighter who has to dip and throw to the body. Boy, to that, make remind, damage. that remind you of anybody just then? Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs>